All of our objects are being built using the minimum polygons needed to get dimension and parallax from our models. Now we'll use the camera map modifier to apply our UVW coordinates to all of our objects. These coordinates will be projected from our perspective match camera so all the objects are basically mapped in screen space. We'll look at a trick or two to deal with the transparency issues with PNG files in 3ds Max's UVW coordinate editor. And we'll build a few of the more complex objects to demonstrate the sub-object modeling process with image layers. Now we can start modeling the scene. I'm going to start with the floor. Let's zoom in here. What we need to figure out is how far back this goes. Now, if remember, this is 16 feet right here, and we have a ladder back here. Now, I'm guessing, if we zoom back here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, we'll say it's six feet. It's uh, on its side, so it's angled slightly. So I'm going to make a six-foot box and see if I can get it to fit back there. I'm also going to look at this thing right here. And, you know, how do we determine what size it is? I'm guessing it's three feet. Uh, so I'm going to guess that's three feet. I'm going to guess that's six feet. So what I'm going to do is create a box and slide it on the floor until it matches up. And the only thing we know right now is 0, 0, 0 is that corner. And we know that that right there is our ladder, our 16-foot ladder. So I'm going to create a box that's uh, 36 inches tall. Actually, I think I had three more inches to it. Yep. Uh, I'm going to add three more inches to it because on the bottom here, it's a three by three foot square box. But if you look at the bottom there, there's a little pallet. So I added three inches for the pallet, assuming it was a two by four. Um, I don't know if it's really there. I was just kind of guessing at that point. So I slide it in to see if it'll line up. Uh, we are pretty close. Now I might be off by that three inches. Let me just take that three inches off. So let's make one of these that's uh, six feet. So I'll just copy this over. And... I'll make this into a six foot one. And now it needs to line up with here. So let's bring this back. And what I'm kind of looking for at this point is this line directly across. I'll move it over so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to say that's pretty close. Let's put it right there. Now it, it, is, lean, uh, it is leaning over. So I'm going to just rotate it slightly so it matches and adjust from there. This corner is this corner, and the box is that far back. And I'm going to swap out the background. And what I'm going to do, instead of putting the black and white one in, I'm going to put a yellow version in, because I'm going to put the material onto the uh, objects, and I'll be able to see the material on it. And once it's camera mapped, everything's going to match perfectly, so I won't know what's mapped and what's not. Having the background display yellow, I can see what objects are mapped once I put the camera map modifier on it. Okay, so our, we have our camera here. We're going to change this to projector. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll call this projector working. And what I'm doing is two directly on top of each other. Projector working is the one I'm going to work with. The other one is what I'm going to freeze in case I ever need to come back because everything's being projected from there. If I screw up this uh, this camera, which is really a projector, if I screw that up, then I've kind of screwed up everything I've done up to that point, and I have to go find that point again. So it's best to have a, an emergency one just there, and all I'm going to do is hide it. So now I need to put the material onto the floor, and I need to turn on so I can see it. Help me model. So keyboard shortcut M brings me to the material editor, and I'm going to use a standard material, and in the uh, diffuse channel, I'm simply going to put the background that we cleaned up. Then I'll drag the material over to the floor object inside of our viewport and turn on show shaded material in viewport so I can see it inside of Max. So I can see it inside of Max, but it just doesn't look right. What's wrong is that we don't have UVW coordinates on it, so it's just slapping onto the plane. So under modifiers, I need to go to UVW coordinates. I have two camera map modifiers here. I've got the camera map modifier and the camera map world space modifier. This can screw you up. Just remember this. Don't use the world space modifier. Just use the simple camera map. What happens is if you use the world space modifier, it'll look correct and everything will seem fine. But when you go into export, the UVWs won't stick. They'll stay in world coordinates. So keep that in mind. It's always the camera map modifier, not the world space modifier. So the camera app is on there. And all we need to do is say, where is it being projected from? Pick camera, click the camera. And now it's projected correctly. And you're like, no, it's not. It looks like ickiness. Um, true, it does. It's actually being projected correctly. What happens here is this uh, modifier locks things onto the vertices. Without enough vertices, 
things are going to look horrible. So this we have to go back and we want to make sure that we have enough vertices in the right places so that there's enough resolution for the map to lock onto. So we'll go down to Edible Poly. I'll use the Show End Result. And I'll start slicing this thing up. You can see that as soon as I start dialing that in, things get clearer, clearer, clearer. Oh, yeah, that's a little silly, right? So we want to go with the minimal amount possible. Probably I'll go with six right now. And we know we're still screwed up here. But we want to go in the other direction as well. So let's select those. And we'll go to connect. And I can go with six. What I'm looking at at this point is how much distortion is happening where? Where do I need the detail? So I'm going to have to slice some pieces in here just to get more detail up there. We'll probably need more detail in front. That's where most of our, our problems are going to be. And so we'll, we'll use our polygons correctly by making sure that we use uh, the majority of them up front and less in back, but we still can't have mass distortion. We can't have that back there. So we still need to clean those things up. See how it gets confusing because we're starting to get a, um, a copy of the map right over here. It starts to get confusing what you're really looking at. So we'll go back to our material editor and this map, let's turn off all tiling. That should clear it up. Now what it'll give us is black there and there. You'll notice that the texture is all skewed. This is due to how the camera map modifier locks the texture onto the geometry's vertices. The more vertices, the smoother your VW coordinates are on your geometry. You have to juggle the need for straight textures with the need for a low polygon count. I'm going to fast forward here as I make edge loops closer to the VR viewer's position. Now keep in mind that the UVW accuracy is more noticeable up close, so you know, model accordingly. So what we need to do is clean up the floor's geometry to uh, take out any polygons that aren't needed. So if we select this and we go to Edged Faces, we can see that we have a few polygons that really could just be deleted completely off. So I'll delete those off and I'll start moving edges in to make sure that the floor is really clean. Okay, now I'm going to speed up everything. Let's put this on fast forward. I'm going to clean up the uh, polygons, taking out anything that doesn't have a material on them. I'll move in the vertices, making sure I stay on the X and Y axes. I don't want to move it up at all. As I move the vertices closer to the edge of the map, or the edge of the texture, you'll notice that the texture straightens itself out a little bit. Uh, basically, since everything's being locked to the vertices, the closer you have vertices to um, edges in an image, the straighter they become. So we finished up the floor model, now we can move on to the walls. 